Hi, I'm Marion Landry, the Technical Marketing Manager for 3ds Max Design and Showcase. In this tutorial, we'll review the exposure control to continue on with the mental ray rendering tips and tricks. One of the important settings of mental ray rendering is the exposure control. Now let's understand what is the exposure control. Think of yourself as a photographer. In this slide, I have example of overexposed image and underexposed image. So basically, when you are set to the manual setting of your camera, you always have to balance the shutter speed, aperture, and film speed in order to have a balance in between the highest point of light and the lowest point of light in your photo. If one of these presets is not entered properly, the result is either overexposed or underexposed. If we have a look at this image, for example, this was taken with a with an automatic camera and the light was read close to the sun so the light intensity was really high therefore automatically the camera thinks that this image has a lot of light and therefore balance the rest of the images by lowering the exposure control then what happened is that you have an underexposed image because really what you're trying to read is that piece of stone that sits in front of the sun. Now that piece of stone is way less bright than the sun itself. So if you are working with an automatic camera, in order to have a properly balanced image, you would have to read the light from the stone itself, not from the sun. The sun is way more light than the stone itself. So the mental ray photographic exposure control is exactly that process. It enables you to modify rendered output with camera-like controls. Now you're more of a point and shoot photographer or someone with more advanced knowledge who likes to play with the manual settings of your camera. You can either use a general exposure value like the automatic mode of your camera or specify shutter speed Aperture. Now in 3ds Max Design, you will find the exposure control under the Environment and Effect window. Here is where you can render the preview. Now I've already rendered a preview here. Now let's keep in mind that the rendering preview will be based on the setting that you've already applied to Mentor Ray. So if I open my Mentor Ray rendering window, you see that the settings that I have here adjusted, uh, final, I have three final gather bounces and I have a final gather precision that is a custom adjustment, will re be reflected in that rendering preview. Now if I go back to the environment and effect window, and if I'm more of a point and shoot camera, I can select an exposure control preset. So for this scene, for example, I would choose the indoor daylight. Now this gives me an estimated exposure control, which might be too bright for my environment. And because I'm a point and shoot camera type, I'm gonna just adjust the exposure value. And you see, it gets adjusted in the preview as well as in my viewports. Now, if I would be more of a photographer and I know what kind of shutter speed, aperture and film speed I'm looking for, I can enter these value here. So basically, exposure control is a plugin component that adjusts the output levels and color range of a rendering, as if you were adjusting film exposure. This process is known as tone mapping. These controls are especially useful for mental ray rendering. This is a step that often gets forgotten, but is crucial to get photorealistic results. You will need to adjust the exposure control according to your scene. Either interior, exterior, daytime or nighttime rendering will all use different exposure settings.